Hey there, I'm Danny. And I'm Rob, and this is the Art Story Podcast. Now, Rob,、mm. listen, I have a tough question for you today. Go on then. What's the world's most famous painting? Well, could it be the Mona Lisa? That's exactly what I was thinking. Hang on, hang on. Or what about、uh, Michelangelo's, you know, God reaching out to Adam on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel? Ooh, that's another good one. And both of them came from a period we know as the Renaissance. It started about 600 years ago, and it was a time when the way people looked at the world began to change forever. Man is the measure of all things. The noblest pleasure is the joy. Of understanding, the truest work of art is but a shadow of the divine perfection. Between the two of us, I'd say we have a lot to share about the Renaissance. Yeah, let's go for it. Before the Renaissance, you could say that life in Europe was basically all about suffering that had to be endured, or a series of temptations from the devil that had to be resisted. The truth is that most people were poor, and life revolved around the Christian Church. But over time and through trade, a group of thinkers emerged: humanists. They believed it was man, not God or the Church, that was at the center of the universe. People deserved dignity, and they could and should try to shape and control their own lives and progress, rather than rely on spirituality and myths. Wasn't it? Called the Dark Ages, I think it was an Italian writer called Petrarch who first said that the world had been pretty dark since the fall of the Roman Empire. <laughs> well, yes, you're correct. He did call it that, but it's not such a popular term today. People prefer the Middle Ages. Dark Ages sounds like the sun never came out. Yes, and people were just miserable all the time. Probably by labeling it dark. Helped historians define the Renaissance as a progressive time, but there must have been certain intellectual and cultural advancements before then. Yes, some of these ideas had already been spreading before, especially with the establishment of the first universities. But it was Petrarch who traveled widely, collecting manuscripts and sharing wisdom from the writers of ancient Greece and Rome. These texts became central to the way humanists thought about how progress could be made in the world by applying that ancient wisdom to the here and now, reflecting it in beautiful art and architecture. There was also a lot of excitement around science, mathematics, and geometry, and it could all be compatible with Christianity because humanity could be celebrated as God's greatest creation. Yeah, I've never been particularly enthusiastic about science, mathematics, and geometry myself. But <laughs> actually, Danny, a lot of these ideas were already flourishing in the Middle East and Asia because of the respect that was being shown to ancient philosophy by the emerging Islamic civilization. So, as trade spread across the Mediterranean, these ideas began to spread as well, starting off in Italy. But we particularly have one family in Italy to thank that essentially controlled Florence for most of the 15th century. Ah, yes. Enter the Medici's. Now, in the Middle Ages, city-states in Italy had become very rich from trade. The leaders of these city-states, such as the Medici's, used their money to boost their own image by supporting artists and writers and creating this exciting cultural atmosphere. Florence, especially, was the place to be. Greek scholars brought their traditions and ancient manuscripts to the city. The Medici started banking in the year 1397 and became incredibly rich, possibly worth something like 129 billion dollars in today's terms. So we're talking the Jeff Bezos and Bill Gates of the Renaissance. Yeah, without the technology, but yeah, unbelievably <laughs> wealthy. Kings actually banked with the Medici's, and the Pope was a major client. They opened banks across Italy and all across Europe. So Renaissance ideas spread further, and over time, you get a Renaissance beginning in Northern Europe as well, where there was a lot of trade with Italy. So Western European civilization actually owes a lot to the Medici's, and some of history's biggest names were associated with them. Now, I bet you didn't know. That the teenage Michelangelo was a student at the sculpture school sponsored by the Medici's, and he became like one of their own family. Huh? I mean, that's a good fact, but I can definitely beat that. Did you know 
that the astronomer Galileo was brought in as their tutor. Hmm. Okay, you got me there. Now, the big patron of the arts in the family was Cosimo the Elder. He spent large amounts of his money commissioning art, collecting manuscripts, and supporting cultural projects like the founding of the first public library. And his humanistic philosophy led him to believe that with great power came great civic responsibility. All those things have given me the greatest satisfaction and contentment, because they are not only for the honor of God, but are likewise for my own remembrance. For fifty years, I have done nothing else but earn money and spend money, and it became clear that spending money gives me greater pleasure than earning it. So at least Cosimo was spending his money on something worthwhile. Well, most of the time, I would think. <laughs> and now, without the church commissioning everything under private patronage. Artists could paint battles and portraits of noblemen and nature, even try to communicate the emotions of God forbid ordinary people. Art could be about real life on planet Earth. Well, at least Florence.、Hmm. So essentially, here is where we begin to see these humanist ideas affecting artwork. If you're going to create realistic depictions. You have to find a way of creating an illusion of reality, so that people looking at your paintings or sculptures could be amazed at how real they look. This is where the Renaissance truly revolutionized art. What do you think you would need to do? Bearing in mind, no one had cameras on their phones. Well, I would imagine painting a selfie could take weeks spent in front of a mirror. But sorry, go on, tell me what extraordinary technique did early Renaissance artists come up with? Really extraordinary. Look there, going off into the distance. Perspective. Think for a moment about ancient Egyptian paintings. You see people with their feet and their heads in profile, while their bodies are facing forwards. Hence the old song, "Walk like an Egyptian." Quite. In other ancient and pre-Renaissance paintings, the size of a person was dictated more by factors like their age or status. Not how far they were from each other or the position of the viewer, but by the 15th century, Italian painters were getting to grips with the problem. They also realized that you could use shadow, eliminating outlines and blending one tone into another, to create the illusion of a three-dimensional form on a flat surface. Yeah, these are all things that we take for granted today, but、uh, I guess. In those days, what happened was that the frame of the painting became something like a window onto another world, where there was this illusion of real depth with the sizes of people and buildings, all relating to some distant vanishing point on the horizon. Just think, it must have been amazing going to see an altarpiece where there's a highly realistic Jesus on the cross, actually towering above you, or circling angels seem to be coming out of the painting at you. It must have been. Jaw-droppingly thrilling, like the Renaissance equivalent of the latest 3D IMAX blockbuster movie for us today. Look out! It actually kind of sounded terrifying, but yes. So now you get hyper-realistic art that really looks like the world, and the faces of people in paintings have the kind of expressions showing emotions that real people have. Paintings could tell stories and convey messages to people who weren't able to read. And it wasn't just painting, was it? Because the Renaissance really expanded our way of seeing, literally, because there was the invention of eyeglasses and telescopes and microscopes and architecture. In architecture, you get this reboot of ancient Roman forms like the column and the arch and the dome, and the relationship between human proportions and buildings becomes really important. It really is just incredible. And as the 15th century gave way to the 16th, the innovations of the early Renaissance spread from Florence throughout Italy. The new invention of printing in the early 16th century meant these ideas could spread even further. Its technical innovations were taken all over Europe by merchants and diplomats, soldiers and scholars. Exploration flourished. Christopher Columbus and Marco Polo opened up new lands. Cultures and ideas to the east and west. In science, the idea that the Earth revolved around the sun rather than the other way around was the basis for our understanding of our universe today. 
and the rulers of other European countries adopted the culture of Renaissance Italy and also supported artists in their own lands. So in England, ah yes, the <laughs> Renaissance gave us William Shakespeare. To be or not to be, that is the question. Shakespeare, undoubtedly the greatest poet and dramatist ever. Oh, well, you would say that, wouldn't you? But of course. Ah, uh, whatever. <laughs> but Italy continued to be an inspiring artistic environment, producing such geniuses as Michelangelo, Raphael, and Leonardo da Vinci. And making a name for yourself became a goal towards which artists could strive towards. Yes, and if you were clever enough to be able to master all of these fields, you might go down in history as a Renaissance man like Leonardo da Vinci. He spent his long life studying and meticulously recording his observations of the human body and the natural world. He designed flying machines and armoured fighting vehicles and thought about solar power. And oh, the way he used oil paint, he could capture the effect of light on the landscape and objects more naturally than ever before. And with greater dramatic effect. For example, in a very famous painting called... The Mona Lisa. Well, Rob, I think this brings us right back to where we started. Hope you enjoyed this journey. Don't forget, there are many more fascinating stories about the world's greatest artists and art movements and analysis of their best works at theartstory.org. <laughs>